<laughs> Sin 2 Act 1. I look way broken. Who's Rocket and Gooney? Oh, great step. Have a seat, too much. And it's held now. But we have just now. What a brilliant move. Turnover ball. Try time. Faletau. So, my old man, he, he moved over in 97, playing for, to play for Abervale. Um, he spent the year here and thought it would be an opportunity to, to bring the family over. And he came back in 98 and flew the, the rest of us over. And uh, yeah, we settled in Abervale for, for a couple of years there. Kind of moved around for the first three, four years, but ended up settling in uh, Ponypool. And um, been there since 2001 and parents are still there now. I couldn't really communicate at that time. I couldn't, uh, couldn't really speak much English, but um, it took quite a while, but it wasn't, it was made easy by all the children just being interested in uh, kind of where I was from and just asking all the questions and slowly kind of picked up the language. As a kid, I guess uh, my dad played for Tonga. Um, rugby was always a part of the family and always enjoyed chucking a ball around, but um, no, I guess I did, it wasn't really that far. It was always about the enjoyment and somehow it ended up being quite serious and and a couple of years later I uh, had the opportunity to, to play for Wales and sat down with my old man and kind of kind of talked to him about it and how he felt about our like origin from being from Tonga and he said oh, look um, most of your life you've been raised here um, I think uh, yeah it's, it's, it's a no-brainer you should pledge uh, your loyalties to Wales and um, yeah it wasn't a difficult it wasn't a difficult decision for myself uh, growing up in Wales and um, yeah, fortunately, uh, I've had the opportunity to wear the jersey a few times. Lovely ball out wide for Rock and Dungooney. Oh, he's absolutely skin nutty! That is just sensational. Grew up in, um, in Fiji in a town called Nosori. It's um, five kilometres away from my village, so um, it's, my journey is kind of like a funny one. Um, because um, I, was, I was studying electronics back at home, and back home, back then, my dad was the only one, you know, the source of money and everything. So uh, he was the only one working. So uh, he can't afford the um, tuition fees and, uh, and everything. So uh, I said to my dad, you know what? Um, I'll go in the plantation, I'll, I'll work in the field. You know? um, and then some of the boys in the village, they were talking about my like, joining the forces and all. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna fill in the form and see how it goes. Um, so I fill in the form, like three weeks later, the invitation letter came through and uh, I yeah, came over here, did all the tests, the maths and English tests, and, and the fitness tests as well. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yo, uh, congratulations, you're through uh, to, uh, to join the Amon course. So I was happy. And rugby wasn't part of the plan. I did 14 weeks uh, basic uh, soldier stuff, and then six months in uh, Bovington training on how to drive a tank, to fix tanks, and pretty much uh, to do anything in the tank. Um, and then I was deployed as a tank driver then in Germany. I spent five years working on Charlie 2s and CVRTs. And then um, when it comes to uh, the, the deployment in uh, Afghanistan, I was re as a as a, as a foot uh, soldier. So basically I wasn't working with tanks anymore. I was uh, doing foot patrols um, pretty much the whole eight months in there. So yeah, that was a good experience I was. And then when I came back, there was a sevens competition down in, uh, in Germany. So um, we formed a sevens team, played a little bit sevens. And uh, boys, I played against the British Army rugby sevens team. And they turned around and said, hey, you know what, you're really good at, at sevens. So why don't you come and play sevens for, your, for the forces? So I started playing sevens for the forces. And they were like, oh, yeah, you're good enough to uh, play 15s. So I started off 15s. Then I went for this um, uh, training camp down in Portugal. So we came over, uh, spent three weeks over there, and Bath phoned up, uh, phoned up and said, right, we want you down here too as well. So um, Newcastle offered two years contract, and Bath offered six months contract. So then I said, right, you know, I'm just going to go for Bath. And uh, things um, turned out different. Yeah, I was, um, I was surprised, to be honest. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, and the following year, they offered like a, um, a full contract, and I was, uh, I can't even believe it. I, I said to my parents, I, this could be um, the turning point for, uh, for ev ev everyone, for the family, even for myself. Because I, 
I didn't even play much rugby back at home. Uh, I was uh, the third or fourth choice winger back home in a, in a village, <laughs> the village team. So uh, yeah, so, uh, ever since then I've been uh, with Bath here. But when I got the phone call from um, Stuart Lancaster, um, I phoned up my dad and they burst into tears because they can't even believe it. Even myself, like two years ago, I was like, I still can't believe that I'm still there. But it's, um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a dream come true, yeah. And they're going wide now with Williams and Faletau. Faletau on Toby Faletau! Oh, to be honest, we come, come across it on Facebook, a lot of people talking about it, how they, how we should have been playing for Tonga and stuff like that. But no, it's, it goes back to when we were younger. I never, never thought I'd play professional rugby. Um, I guess it's always something I would have like dreamt of, but never thought it would happen. Um, we were just always playing around together, me, back, Mako, Billy and my brother. And yeah, uh, Mako said something to me back in like 2013 um, after the, the Lions tour then. He's like, oh, he just turned around and said to me, who, who would have thought? And like exactly that, like who would have thought we would have been there um, when we were just out on a patch of grass just chucking the ball around, having fun. Um, but no, it, it would have been great if we all ended up back there, but as it as it's happened, we're we're all uh, in different places. I'll always be Tongan, but now I, I'm playing for Wales. I, I spent most of my life there. I don't think um, I'll be changing that now. Still got like messages and stuff like this. Um, right now, like people still talking about it. you should be playing for for Fiji rather than uh, than England. Uh, getting called different names out there too as well. <laughs> get it. Getting called traitor and all sorts of stuff, but to wear um, the England jersey right now, it's a, it's a big achievement for me, especially to be the, the first Fijian to, to don that white jersey. Yeah. My parents are always supportive of me, yeah, whether it's, uh, it's for Fiji or whether it's um, uh, for, for England, they're always supportive, but the rest of the village, they were just um, going mental. But yeah, they were... They were calling me traitor. Um, one of my uncles turned around and said, "Right, yeah, you've been living all of your life in Fiji. Why don't you give back for for the country?" I was like, "Come on, man, you can't be saying stuff like that." But uh, yeah, um, up until now, the um, uh, even um, my uncle, the uncle, is not really happy with me being part of the England England squad. But yeah, but the, the way I said, I try explaining stuff to them, but. Oh, really appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah.